So it's a stunning morning in Melbourne, Wednesday morning, and I'm about to take you down to Jimmy Rum Distillery in Dramana, not far from Bass and Flinders, which makes a stunning gym. And we're going to have a chat to James McPherson, owner, founder, all around genius of Jimmy Rum, the only rum distillery on the peninsula, and I dare I say, the only rum distillery in Victoria. Let's go and smash this, have a chat to a fascinating guy, look at some fascinating booze, delicious booze, try it already. I'm not going to lead you guys in blind. We're going to smash this because the interview for the magical mystery, di magical distillery tours of the peninsula. Let's go and deal with this, people. Let's go and have some fun. <laughs> made it down the uh, M11 um, freeway, peninsula, freeway, whatever it is, road, lots of speed dumps, stuff like that. In one piece, I'm actually at Jimmy Rum's distillery now. We're going to go in, we're going to meet Jim himself, ask the difficult questions that you know I always ask, like, um, what are we doing here? And what day is it? So we're going to go in, we're going to bust this interview, ask the questions that need to be asked for you, my people, my people. We're going to nail this. Have a look at this beautiful distillery. It's big, it's got a great menu. You really should get your asses down here, people, my people. Went up to Tracy, they actually put in a whole lot of camphor laurels. Mm. Bad idea. Camphor laurels are really brittle. Brittle. So they had another cyclone came through and had all these camphor laurels down over Darwin. Oh, no. They had to bring out the chainsaw and start hacking up meter wide trunks because they just literally shattered in the wind. Yep. Right. Yeah, this is the council and we think things through. Yeah, well, right. sounded like a good idea at the time. Okay, you've kind of like covered already. You had a career as a marine engineer which you kind of like described as um, the ship's mechanic. Yes. I'll, next time I'm bumping to a marine engineer, I'll say, oh, you're just a glorified mechanic and see how that goes. I don't think it's going to go terribly well. Few, few bit more experience and qualifications sitting behind it, but uh, it's just a nice, easy way to understand what we get up to. So, playing with lots of different things, everything from galley drains through to electrical, hydraulic control. Nowadays, ships are incredibly, incredibly technical. It's not a steam engine ticking along. Things like one of my last major ships was what they call a dynamic positioning ship, where it could hold station no matter what the weather. So it had five different thrusters, five different engines, and a hell of a lot of very, very expensive control gear to maintain it all. So you had to understand some pretty pretty heavy electronics to, to be able to fault find it. And then it was all diesel electric as well. So it uh, was a very, very interesting ship. Major, where were you on it? Pardon? Where were you on it? Mainly out of Perth? Um, that one, no, that one was all over the country. So it was a what they call an ROV vessel. So remote operated offshore vessel. So it handled sub mini submarines for the oil and gas industry. So, oh, okay. um, and a lot of very technical winch gear in there as well. It had to, the, as the boat was moving, you don't want the submarine to be moving underneath you. So yeah. all the crane and the winch had to be what they call heave compensating. So as the boat moved out, it paid out. So as the submarine could hold its position. So it was all, all quite interesting stuff. They would have used one recently when they think they found Emilia Earhart's plane. It yes. about five, five clicks down and they needed it to basically stay dead on top so they could actually get the happy snaps. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of these things come out of the, the North Sea. So the Norwegians are amazing at their ships they build because, well, they're drilling for oils 2,000 or two kilometres under, under the ocean. Where in Bass Strait we're only 120 to 140 metres, it's nothing. So mm. they've they've got some big challenges over there. So yeah, and two kilometres down, you can't exactly send someone down with a wrench to fix it. No, no, it doesn't work that well. There's some very I've seen some very interesting videos. of some very interesting sea creatures at two kilometres down. I can begin to man imagine. I've got uh, three boys. You start bringing out the um, stuff that would bite the shit out of them in the middle of the night. And yeah. Go, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got to go and watch more of this. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. So. I understand that you turned to rum because one day you went, okay, I've been at sea for the last 30 years, we've all been drinking rum, Let's go. you're going to go and make some, because that's what Cameron was doing at Four Pillars. Yes. Said, why didn't you make brandy? And he goes, well, I wasn't drinking brandy, I was drinking gin. Mm. So, yeah. Well, and, and it's Cam's a very good statement there. It's literally the, the only spirit I enjoy is rum. So now I'm a bit more seasoned. Um, I can appreciate good spirit no matter what it's made or what style it is. But I still, apart from 
one time where I could only get a whiskey that was always on the shelf and I wanted something neat. It's the only time I've ever purchased a whiskey over the bar. So I will always go for a neat rum. It was, it was my drink of choice ever since I was a teenager. I still, to this day, drink far more beer than I drink rum. But uh, it's, it was the spirit of choice. So, so where were you a teenager? Uh, locally here, actually. So I grew up as a teenager in uh, Mount Eliza, which is about two suburbs further north than yeah. here. Yeah. Um, so I know this area very well. I've lived here 40 odd years. So, yeah. Yeah, it's not like me where I actually come from wrong country. Yeah. So you're well, I'm almost considered a local. I, I wasn't born and bred here, so I, I still probably another 10, 15 years before I'm considered local. I hear you. I've lived in Melbourne 39 years. I, I got the hell out of Dodge when I was 19. Yep. I had my heart broken and there was a bus south and I jumped on it and went, I'm going away for a month. Yep. Um, 39 years later, I ain't going back. So I hear you. Have you met